Now the news broke that Jerron Ennis is signed with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing. And now you got fans clamoring because they feel like a bout with Terrence Crawford is now realistic. Yeah. Do you think it's more realistic now than it was a month ago, two months ago? I think so because he got more of a solid backhand. And Terrence Crawford, for real, for real, he, he in the wind right now. He just hanging out. And I say that because it's not, it's not really anything in stone for him. And the rematch, obviously, not happening. Uh, Earl Smith don't even seem interested in the rematch. And then I don't think a lot of people want to see the rematch. We will watch it, but I don't think people want to see it. And Boots, him and Boots will be perfect. That's a great fight. Great fight. Now, it's a fight that's been talked about consistently, I'm going to say, for the last for the last year or so. Um, how do you think it looks at 47 as opposed to 54? I think it's the same fight either way, no matter. Um, I think Bud would try to get the boots early because the age... The age is going to play a part. But the reason the age will play a part is because you're talking about two animals that has they have a lot of similarities, but one is the older version. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Boots is a lot sharper, though. They're a lot sharper than what Crawford is used to. Um, they're a lot faster than what Crawford is used to. So I see Bud trying to turn it into a street fight early. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and, and if he's not able to do that and be successful with it, and it's gonna be like kind of like a torture session um, because boots boots really don't slow down. And as they get deeper in the rounds, after the after the fifth and sixth round, Crawford Crawford will have to deal with a lot, and I don't think he could just load up one shot, and knock him out. I don't think that'll happen. I think he just I think the, the, the output will be the big difference. I mean, boots is still dealing with a young man's output. Um, Crawford be picking his shots and I think that's where the difference is going to lie great fight though do you see Eddie Hearn putting pressure to make this fight happen got to why wouldn't he Eddie Hearn listen after PBC put on uh, Spence and Crawford Eddie Hearn putting pressure on to make boots in Crawford that would put him in damn near like Hall of Fame of promoters even though promoters get put in the Hall of Fame anyway because of all the years put in, but mm. a fight like that, making that happen, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. Jay, so video comes out where Javante Davis was doing strength and conditioning, well, looked like it, mm -hmm. and he looked absolutely fucking shredded. Mm -hmm. Is this the maturation of a Javante Davis where, you know, early in his career, you know, he put on weight in between camps, and now, you know, you see him. I don't think I've ever saw him this in shape this far out like he looks like a fucking action figure yeah he's i mean he's maturing as a person maturing as a person maturing as a fighter i understand that he, he got to keep his body ready and um he gotta he gotta stay in great shape to be able to perform and be the guy that we think he can be also because what that says to me is he get ready to start fighting. After Frank Martin, he get ready to start fighting the guys we want to see him in the ring with. <laughs> he trying to be ready. Is there a such thing as peaking too early? Yeah, it's definitely a such thing. How do you manage it? Go get some rest. Go lay your ass down. See, people, what people forget over time, we judge things by 15 second videos. When there's 24 hours in a day, 30 days in a month, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we don't see the days they going to the spas and shit. They getting massages and all that shit. Mm -hmm. They laying down. They get, you know what I'm saying? They getting pampered, whatever. We don't see those days. We don't see the rest days. All we see is the 15 second videos where the guy is showing off his muscles. So we think he living like that every day. Nah, he sleep like everybody else. You know what I mean? What kind of Javante Davis are you expecting to see against Frank Martin? I mean, seeing where his body is and seeing where his mind is this early, because they not fighting to what, June? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for him to be real sharp and fast. Real sharp and fast. The power, he understand. 
he'll have power from the first round over to the 12th. So I can see him not looking to throw the biggest shots too early, but I think he'll be like super sharp, super fast. I think that, because that's, that's what's gonna make the difference versus a Frank Martin, is the speed and the IQ, you know what I mean? The precision, all of those things in the fight like that with Frank Martin. He's gonna have to just be better at everything than Frank Martin, because Frank Martin is that, Frank Martin is that player on the basketball court who might not be the leading scorer, scorer. he might not be the leading assist man, he might not be the leading steals or rebound guy, but he averaged 17 points, eight rebounds, nine assists, three steals. That's still good stats. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? He official guy. He's needed. So that's what Frank Martin is. Here with the Lord of the Smoke. No. What's good, Greggy? Chilling, man. Trying to get this Ran through so he was just gonna eat. Bro, I am fucking dying over here. Yeah, man. I need a platter. Man. Dying over here. All right, so something that's been just introduced in the boxing, right? This news, I think it's like one seasonal team combat league, right? Yeah. It has a lot of notable names, uh, you know, whether they're, you know, amateurs that's just turning pro or whether they used to be world champions, some even current world champions. Yeah. Is team combat league good for boxing? I think it's good for the fighters. I think it's good and bad, like anything else. I like the activity. I like the idea. I don't like the rounds. I don't like the rounds because a fighter who's normally a boxer feels pressured to go in there and go to war. And you got one round and you might possibly have another one round, but that might be like 13 rounds down the line to get back in there. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, but I like the idea of it because a lot of fighters who are not being promoted either properly or at all. And that gives them a home. And, and like I said, get his activity. And they're getting paid. Yo, I ain't even lie, I've seen some intriguing matchups come across. Like I've been to the to the first two. Shouts out Philadelphia Smoke. We two and oh. Right? Right. But it was some matchups that I didn't even know I wanted. I seen today weighed in Rashidi Ellis. Mike Fox. Mike Fox. Oh my god. When I saw that, I'm like, damn, that's a good fight. But but we gotta watch it on TCL. Yo, so we like, get damn. we we get one round, yo. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's what I mean by like and Mike Fox is a 10, 12 round fighter, so is Rashidi. So I feel like we really deserve that fight yo, later on. Do you think that some of these fights could uh could help materialize the fights in person? Absolutely. Because Mike Fox versus Rashid, I'm like, damn, like that's a good job. The reason the, the reason, the reason, the reason that can happen is because, for one, you could be like, all right, well, I lost to that guy in TCL. I need that back, mm -hmm. or it's just a good fight, good matchup. So we can definitely make it happen again. That'd last, be crazy. Last night I saw uh, Elijah Vines yeah. versus Jason Moreno. Right now, Elijah nine and zero. Moreno was only one and zero, but you know, right. national champion. Right, bro, that shit was fire. That's what I'm saying. In his fights like that, I feel like that we should be getting later on in the, in the actual 10 rounds, 12 rounds. But CCO is like a teaser, but it's a, it's like an exciting teaser. You know what I mean? I thought about what I do with myself. Yeah, but then I'm like, no, nah, because I don't want my lick back. If a motherfucker catch me in the last 10 seconds with a shot, I'm going to be mad. Because <laughs> you know I, mean? I got to wait another 12, 13 rounds. Get it back. Well, let's talk about that, right? Yeah. So we've had this conversation off camera. I want you to do it. I feel like it's a good way for you to go out, yeah. right? You're you're in that in between where you can still fight, but you spend more of your time training fighters than actually fighting. Yeah. So I feel like give G Hackett a 12, 12 week run, man, and then ride off in the sunset. You know, <laughs> put your hat in the middle of the ring like the Undertaker, <laughs> <laughs> just walk out. I don't know because for one, I, I would have to get in that sheet for that shit. And I can't, I don't know, that one round shit drive me crazy. I think I'd be driven crazy. I don't know. I gotta, I would do it. I would do it because it looked fun, but it's like one round, I'd be pissed off by that. I think that really pissed me off. In the first week, Joey hit a walk off home run. Shit was tired. We needed one. <laughs> Real shit, Joey Dueco comes through. I heard about that. Yeah. 
and Joe having fun with it. And that's what I'm saying. Guys is having fun with that shit. Yep. And I like it. If you are watching this video right now, right, I need you to hit the comments section up or tag tag Marshall Kaufman. Yeah. King's Promotion yeah. on Instagram and let them know you want Greg Hackett. Because I'm thinking about it like this. Look at Mike Fox. How you going to get one round with Mike Fox? Bro, that's crazy. Mike, Mike Fox is going to be the toughest out in Mike one Fox round. Six, six. <laughs> How the fuck you going to get one round with Mike Fox? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, need to, I need to get my rounds in. I don't know. Which weight would you want to compete at? If I was fighting in that, I'd be say like, 60 on down, like 60, 47, something like that. On down. I wouldn't want to go one round with a light heavyweight or something like that. Jay, need time to break them down. Another matchup that they promoting, yeah. Quadel Albright versus Rashidi Ellis. Yeah. Chris Colbert versus Nair Albright. Chris Colbert is in it? Fighting for who? DC. See what I'm saying? That's a fight that I that I need to saying. see in person. I need to see in real. Yeah, a ten round draw. I need. Like, I need uh, that. I mean, Colbert, guess, woo! If y'all watching, I need that in but real guess life. What? Yeah, but guess what? This could be the start to that ended up happening. Let's, let's let's say that that could happen. Fight could happen. That's bro. Rashidi and Fox could could happen. happen. You know what I'm saying, it's a lot of fights. Yeah. I mean, I guess Who so. and, um, I'm sorry, fucking Quad and Rashidi could end up having So when they coming the up the road, is they like in a, in a, a Madden Cruiser or some shit? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you got, it's, it'll be fun. I don't know. I'm next year. we see where I'm at next year, weight-wise. In the comments, hit up Team Combat League, Marshall Kaufman, Kings Promotions. Let them know you want Greg Hackett. Yeah, I might, I might fuck with it. We see where I'm at next next year and wait. And we get it on.